Why planes don't fly over the Pacific Ocean? Ever think about why on long trips, planes seem to avoid the huge Pacific Ocean? Is it because of the weather being so random, the way the Earth is shaped, or something else? Stay tuned as we try to figure out why so many planes take longer routes that skip the Pacific. What the answers might surprise you. Several factors contribute to the fact that airplanes steer clear of flying over the Pacific Ocean. On many of the smaller islands, there are no airstrips or airports, which means that if a plane needed to make an emergency landing, it would be difficult to find a spot to land. This is the most typical explanation. It would be extremely challenging to locate a plane that had crashed in the Pacific Ocean because of its vastness and the fact that it is located in a remote area. It is also important to take into account the frequently turbulent weather conditions that plague the Pacific. It is a difficult task to fly over the Pacific Ocean, regardless of whether you are in a commercial aircraft or a private jet. Take a more in-depth look at the reasons why this is the case. Why do aircraft stay away from the Pacific Ocean? It's common practice for commercial airlines that operate between East Asia and the Americas to steer clear of flying over the Pacific Ocean. This is primarily due to the high costs involved and the safety concerns that arise from flying during stormy weather. Have you reached a point where you are prepared to experience new levels of luxury, comfort, and efficiency? The weather is not the only factor that prevents aircraft from flying over the Pacific Ocean. There are other factors as well. Directional effectiveness. When compared to traveling across marine routes, traveling over curved routes over land is known to be more cost-effective for airlines. It is more frequent for a path that is curved over land to be faster than a path that is straight over water during travel. When it comes to flights from the United States to Japan, for example, a route that curves across Canada and Alaska would provide the least amount of time for travel, while also providing the highest fuel efficiency results. If you are looking at a flat map, it could be tough to imagine curved paths, but when you look at a globe, it is immediately apparent. Decreased expenditures and time spent on things. It is possible for airlines to increase their earnings by avoiding flying over the Pacific Ocean. This is excellent for passengers because they will pay less for their tickets and spend less time in the air. Protection and peace of mind. Because the Pacific Ocean is not an appropriate area for a forced landing in the case of an emergency, airplanes should avoid flying over it. This is because the Pacific Ocean is not a good location for flight over. It is extremely doubtful that anyone on board a jet that crashed in the Pacific would survive the landing, and it is also quite unlikely that rescue workers would have much of a chance of locating them and saving them. Since it is preferable to crash land on solid ground, ideally close to an airport where emergency services are accessible, most airlines prefer to fly over land. Alterations caused by the weather In view of the fact that storms are more likely to occur over the ocean than they are on land, the majority of flights are designed to spend as little time as possible over water. Due to the harsh weather and frequent lightning strikes that occur over the Pacific Ocean, it would not be safe for an airplane to fly over the ocean. As a result of the more favorable weather conditions, the majority of airplanes that originate in the Americas and are destined for East Asia take the overland route that passes through Canada and Alaska. There are many challenges involved with flying across the Pacific Ocean. Jet Streams Jet streams, which are a system of air currents that circle the Earth many miles above the planet's surface, are another reason why aircraft don't fly over the Pacific Ocean. Due to Earth's rotation, these air currents generally flow from west to east. If an airplane is flying in the same direction as a jet stream, it may save time and fuel, but if it is flying against a jet stream, it may suffer high turbulence and might be destroyed. It is common practice for the majority of flights in that region to follow the path of the polar jet stream, which passes across the landmasses of Canada and Alaska. What kinds of flights are available to take you across the Indian Ocean? Any anyone who has ever traveled to a location in the Pacific Ocean is aware that traveling across the entire ocean is a very rare occurrence. They steer clear of paths that are straight and instead fly over more expansive expanses of territory. Transporting aircraft across the Pacific Ocean The journey that takes place when an airplane goes from Asia or Australia to the Americas or vice versa is referred to as a trans-Pacific flight. This type of journey is also known as a transatlantic flight. Even though transatlantic flights are more popular, transpacific flights have been available for commercial usage ever since the 1930s. This is despite the fact that transatlantic flights are more common. There are a great number of aircraft that are utilized for making transpacific journeys, and the Boeing 747 is among the most widely employed of these aircraft. This is due to the fact that it has a big passenger capacity and efficient fuel consumption. There have been recent developments in aviation technology that have made it possible to occasionally operate twin-engine aircraft for the purpose of traveling across the Pacific Ocean for business purposes. The number of transoceanic flights that are currently in operation is growing as a result of the usage of modern jetliners such as the Airbus A320, 
Boeing 737 and Boeing 787. The vast majority of these flights are headed in the direction of further flown destinations such as Hawaii, New Zealand, and Australia. Traveling to countries or islands located in the Pacific Ocean and taking part in the activities there. Because it is not possible to travel around the Pacific Ocean, it is not possible to travel to or from nations in areas that are located along the Pacific Rim. Some examples of these countries and locations include New Zealand, Fiji, Solomon Islands, Tonga, and Vanuatu, for example. What is the average amount of time required to fly across the Pacific Ocean? When traveling across the Pacific Ocean, the amount of time it takes to complete the journey is very variable and is impacted by a number of different factors. The type of aircraft, the distance flown, the weather, and the fuel economy of the plane are all elements that come into play here. In the event that a Boeing 747 were to go from Los Angeles to Tokyo, without making any stops along the route, the duration of the flight would be at least 11 or 12 hours. The Pacific Ocean is so vast that it begs the question, why don't airplanes fly over it before landing? Considering the immense extent of the Pacific Ocean, it is necessary to have an incredible quantity of gasoline in order to go across it. When it comes to commercial airplanes, on the other hand, the vast majority of them do not fly directly over the Pacific Ocean. Rather, they take what are known as curved paths. These paths offer a route that is not only more expedient, but also more effective, because they take into account the curved contour of the Earth. The shortest distance between two sites is not always a straight line since the Earth is spherical. This is because of the gravitational pull of the Earth. Although at first glance this may appear to be a contradiction, in reality it actually works out quite smoothly. In order to reduce the likelihood of encountering obstacles and to reduce the amount of fuel that is required, airplanes choose for curved routes rather than straight ones. In addition, using straight roads is more efficient. This is due to the fact that a curved path covers more terrain than a straight one does, which means that it provides more possibilities for landing depending on the circumstances of the emergency situation. In the event that an airplane were to crash in the Pacific Ocean, it would be required to conduct a large-scale search and rescue operation. This would be required in order to locate the wreckage of the aircraft that was recently destroyed. Enjoyed the video? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on more intriguing facts and answers to questions you never knew you had.